Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is silver spot in the Australian dollar. Crossed over silver spot in the U.S. dollar. You can see this is the weekly chart. Now, I've drawn a couple of trend lines in here. Uh, the lower trend line, that is silver in the U.S. dollar. This upper one is silver in the Australian dollar. You can see that silver in the Australian dollar has broken out and is doing a retest, whereas silver is significantly lower in the U.S. dollar. Now, if you listen to the latest interview with Andy Hoffman on SGT Report, fantastic interview, everything Andy does is great. Uh, Andy points out, uh, Sean says that, uh, well, how long is this going to go on? And uh, Andy says, well, it's already ending. Uh, if you look around the world, rallies are happening in the precious metals in currencies that are collapsing. So in the dollar, it hasn't happened yet. But you can see here, here's a hint that it's already starting to happen in Australia. It's happening in Japan. It's happening in other places. So that gives you an idea if you have this last man standing, we'll say, and that's going to be the U.S. dollar, you can probably get a pretty good idea of who's behind the precious metals manipulation. That would be the United States government. Now, look at how tight these two matched uh, for most of this time. You did have this spike here back in uh, the beginning of the rally of QE after the financial crisis. And uh, you had some bounces here and there. But for the most part, these track each other very closely. It's only until recently, really this year, when the currencies of the other countries started to collapse against the dollar that you start to see this. So uh, we're seeing gold and silver begin to turn around against other currencies. And of course, the dollar is going to be the last man standing because that is the world reserve currency. It's not going to be the world reserve currency for very much longer. I'm very convinced of that. So let's get to the main story. Before we do that, I'm going to reference this chart just because I want to show you a real market. We're going to be talking about uh, what I'll call brains versus brawn, the Braun Sacheki article about Bix Weir and his argument about the silver eagle allocation. But I just wanted to show you this market because this is the most active market in Bitcoin right now. It's the Chinese market. Well, actually, there's two. There's OKCoin OK and this Huobi index. And you can see it's very, very active. You can see the trades going on. That's called a real market. Now, one would want to ask, why is it that we have this currency, this cryptocurrency, that's not controlled by governments. It trades 24-7, 365. You can take delivery of it anytime, anywhere, and you can always find a market for it in any country almost now, but very many countries. Whereas we have gold and silver and, uh, you know, the currencies, for the most part, you can sign up a Forex account if you want to be risky enough to do such a thing and you can trade currencies it used to be in the past the only people who could trade currencies in the after hours would be bankers and their buddies but now that we have these forex exchanges you can do that of course these a lot of these forex exchanges just evaporate overnight left like the f uh, fcxm scandal so the question is is why is it that these uh Cryptocurrencies that aren't controlled by governments can trade 24 by 7, 365, but um, the precious metals only trade a few hours a day. Well, I think the answer to that question is really obvious. They're controlled by governments. Now, that brings us to this story. This is the latest story I want to look at from Bron Sacheki. This is this guy down at the Perth Mint, and he is constantly making excuses for the... Uh, U.S. Mint's inability to supply enough silver eagles to meet demand and try to give a reason why they're on allocation. Now, to give you a little bit of the backstory, we're going to jump over to a Bixweir article. And if you remember, Bixweir was the one 
who cited this law. Nobody was talking about this. Uh, certainly not Bron Sacchecki, who's very late to the party. Uh, but Bix Weir was talking about this a long time ago. Now, Braun's going to try to argue that the reason the law was changed is because of some strange thing about proof coins, but that's not why the law was changed. The law was changed because Bix Weir pointed it out, and uh, they were breaking the law. Actually, they're still breaking the law, but that's why they changed the law. So let's read a little bit of this, and then we're going to jump over to the, Bix, the original Bix Weir article and show uh, why Braun's argument is just full of holes here. So here's the article. U.S. Mint has no, quote, sufficient to meet public demand requirement. The idea that the U.S. Mint has a legal obligation to mint and issue bullion coins in quantities sufficient to meet public demand is one that I have seen mentioned every time the U.S. Mint puts its bullion coins on allocation. While originally true, it is no longer the case. Hmm. Until recently, I had accepted the U.S. Mint had this legal requirement when, as when I was discussing Ted Butler's theory that J.P. Morgan, quote, is exploiting a loophole in the law that requires the Mint to produce to whatever the demand might be. However, I was prompted to have a closer look at the law when reading the recent open letter by Bixweir to the U.S. Mint, available at silverseek.com, Another smoking gun in the U.S. silver eagle allocation conspiracy. Pro tip, it helps your credibility if you address a letter to the right person. Edmund Moy resigned as director of the U.S. Mint in 2011, as a quick Wikipedia check would have confirmed. So here's a little jab from Braun here towards Bix because uh, not only is he implying that Bix really doesn't pay attention, he's also implying, really, that Bix is lying, that he didn't really send the letter. But let's look at the article. Uh, this is on Silver Seek. This is the Bix Weir article from Monday, October 19th. And, and Bix is claiming that he sent this letter. Here you can see that he supposedly sent to Edmund Moy, and I'm not going to take you to the Wikipedia, but if you go to the Wikipedia, you can see that Edmund Moy isn't with them anymore. Um, he left quite some time ago. Does that mean that Bix is an idiot? No. Does that mean that Bix is lying? I don't think so. It just means that he might have made a mistake. Are we going to discredit everything he said based on that? That really doesn't carry much to weight with me. Uh, but let's look at this and what Bix said, and then we'll go back to Braun's article. Dear sirs, it's come to my attention that your continual limits on the allocation of U.S. Silver Eagles since June 2015 is once again in violation of the American Silver Eagle Bullion Program, Title II of Public Law 9961, codified as uh, 31 U.S.C. 5112, which requires the U.S. Silver Eagles to be produced, quote, in quantity sufficient to meet public demand. The current limitation placed on U.S. Silver Eagles is not due to limited manufacturing capabilities of the U.S. Mint facilities, but rather due to a supposed shortage of silver planchets blanks coming from official suppliers to the U.S. Mint. This is not a true statement, and I demand that the U.S. Mint cease any limitation on U.S. Silver Eagle sales immediately and comply with the law. Proof of availability of stock was revealed in a recent article and interview with the CEO of U.S. Mint's largest blank provider, the Sunshine Mint. Sunshine Minting operating around the clock to meet silver demand, and it gives the Coin World article. In this interview, published in Coin World, the Sunshine Mint CEO, Tom Powers, states that the Sunshine Mint will produce over 70 million ounces of silver products this year and that the U.S. Mint is not demanding or receiving 100% of this production. Quote, Sunshine Minting is the primary supplier of one ounce silver planchets to the United States Mint for the production of American Silver Eagle bullion coins. Sunshine also provides silver planchets to other undisclosed world mints. The United States Mint doesn't get 100% of our capacity, Power said. In 2014, Sunshine Minting produced 70 million ounces of silver bullion products and is likely to eclipse 
that level in 2015 power set. On the surface, the wide disbursement of the Sunshine Mint's blank production may seem reasonable, but in reality, and in accordance with the law, the U.S. Mint is required to increase their bid for all silver blanks until they bid high enough to obtain enough blanks to meet public demand. Now, this is going to be the key here. Remember this when we get back to bronze article, because the way a market works is that if you can't get enough supply, you increase your bid. That's called supply and demand. That is economics 101. This high bid requirement is across all other authorized suppliers of silver blanks to the U.S. Mint. It is the law and the fact that the Sunshine Mint, being the largest supplier of blanks, is producing over twice the output needed by the U.S. Mint gives support to the theory that the U.S. Mint silver suppliers are illegally conspiring to distort the fair market value of silver. After all, According to conclusions in all three CFTC silver manipulation investigations, since the futures and options price of silver was equal to the price of physical silver, there was no manipulation. That is clearly no longer true, as it is the artificially low silver prices today that has led to the current silver shortage. And this is not just a retail blank shortage. The Sunshine Mint reveals in this interview that the availability of Comex 1,000 ounce good delivery silver bars are also in a shortage. Quote, planchants are not the only form of silver currently in short supply. There has been a shortage of 1,000 ounce silver bars, Powers said. With two of the most popular forms of silver bullion, one ounce silver blanks, and 1,000 ounce Comex silver bars, it is disingenuous at best for anyone to claim that there is no physical silver shortage. Now we have direct proof that the price of Comex silver futures and options prices are not reflecting the price or supply availability of physical silver. It's once again time for the CFTC to open another silver manipulation investigation into the price suppression on the Comex. Summary. Due to the requirements of the U.S. Silver Eagle law, the U.S. Mint must produce coins, quote, in quantities sufficient to meet public demand, which puts the U.S. Mint in the unique position among all other buyers of silver blanks as being required to be the highest bidder for silver blank production when global supplies of U.S. Silver Eagles are not meeting demand. By holding back the higher bids for physical silver, the U.S. Mint is participating in the price suppression that has distorted the supply-demand dynamics for a free market in silver, which has created the shortages of physical silver. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've said this, and I'm going to keep saying this until people understand it. If there is a shortage, by definition, a shortage of anything, then that means that someone is interfering in the free market. That is a law. The evidence is clear and the U.S. Mint must end their violation of Public Law 9961 and increase their bids for silver blanks in order to produce the quantity of U.S. silver eagles required to meet public demand. It is disingenuous for our politicians and regulators to decry the widespread use of artificial market manipulation on the one hand and play a major role in supporting it on the other, signed a concerned citizen, Bix Weir. And by the way, I commented down here, Bix, you just got called out. Uh, he said that you uh, don't know what you're doing when you sent that letter. Now let's look at the Braun Sacheki article, and I'm going to break this down to show why he is... I'll say a very subtle deceiver. Speaking of the Big Square argument, he says, until recently I had accepted the U.S. Mint had this legal requirement as when I was discussing Ted Butler's theory that J.P. Morgan is exploiting a loophole in the law requiring the Mint to produce whatever the demand might be. However, I was prompted to have a closer look at the law when reading the recent open letter by Big Square. United States Code Title 31 in subsection says, quote, that the Secretary shall mint an issue in qualities and quantities that the Secretary determines are sufficient to meet public demand. My emphasis. It appears that these subsections were amended by the Coin Modernization Oversight and Continuity Act of 2010 in December 2010, replacing the non-discretionary word quantities with qualities and quantities that the Secretary of the Treasury determines are in 
my opinion, gives the Secretary discretion on how many coins to make to meet demand as it is difficult to forecast demand for product driven by volatile precious metal prices that would mean sh that shortages would occur when demand spikes. So you can see the statement, Secretary determines are sufficient to meet public demand. Now, since when is it a matter of government determination what prices are? Because that's what this statement amounts to. It means uh, we know in free markets, back to our real free market, the cryptocurrencies, we know that in free markets, supply, demand, and price, this is economics 101. There's no secretary, there's no authority that determines demand. You don't determine demand. Do you see that? Demand is not determined. Demand is something that exists. That is the number of people that want something. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with what the government thinks. In December 2010, replacing the non-discretionary word quantities with qualities, and he says, while Bix argues that the revised wording has no ambiguity and, quote, there are no provisions in the law for Treasury Secretary to stop sales or ration silver coins, the only determinant of the Secretary in the law is that he must supply sufficient coins to meet public demand. It would seem that the amendment was specifically made in response to the cancellation, and then he goes on to his stupid argument about uh, proof silver eagles, which has nothing to do with this. The reason why they changed the law was because of the previous letters that Bix were had sent. Additionally, the concept of demand only makes sense in respect of a time period. Okay, now we have Braun trying to rewrite all of economics by telling us that we have to have another factor in here. We can't just talk about supply and demand and price. We have to talk about a time period. The fact that there is no time period mentioned in the law would mean that those proposing that the U.S. Mint must never stop sales or ration are saying that the U.S. Mint has to supply as and when demanded, that is, on a day-to-day -day basis. This leads to the absurd position that the U.S. Mint would have to hold tens of millions of coins in stock as it's possible that on any day there could be such an amount of orders placed. Indeed, this probably wouldn't even be enough as it is impossible to know what may be demand on any day Thus, there is no level of stock that would guarantee to protect the U.S. Mint from breaking the law. Okay, there's a statement. There is no level of stock that would guarantee to protect the U.S. Mint from breaking the law. Well, there's one thing conveniently left out by Braun here. Is that the U.S. Mint could raise the price. That's all they have to do. Let's say that the U.S. Mint has... 1 million boxes of Silver Eagles. And on a day, they're finding that they've gotten, let's say that the Mint normally gets um, an order for 100,000 Silver Eagles, which is however, however many boxes. And, uh, and they have 100 times that amount. And then all of a sudden on one day, they get an order for 10 times that amount. So they see a large percentage of their stock decline. Well, what could they do? They could raise prices. Now, the question that really underlies this whole thing is, why is it that the U.S. Mint doesn't raise prices? And we know the answer, Bix has already told us, because the U.S. Mint isn't basing their prices on supply and demand. They're basing their prices on the COMEX, which is fake supply and demand, and that's why you have shortages and rationing because it isn't a real market. So we have this disingenuous nonsense from Braun trying to explain to us that the laws of economics don't apply to uh, silver coins. I would argue that the fact that the law makes no reference to a time period would mean that any court asked to rule on this wording would apply the standard that would apply to a privately run business. Privately run businesses do not spend massive amounts of money on building production capacity to meet temporary spikes that would otherwise sit idle, as that's an uneconomic and would lead to an eventual bankruptcy of the business. No, that's not what they do, Braun. You know what private businesses do if they have a temporary spike? Especially if they have a temporary spike 
uh, in in demand that might uh, be sustained and they don't really know. You know what they do, Braun? It's really it's a really neat thing that uh, Adam Smith came up with. It, it it's called raising prices. That's what they do. They raise the price when they see a spike in demand. And you know what that does? It's kind of a miracle. It actually balances things out. So here we have this guy, Braun Sacheki. This guy, I, I, I better not say anything else because I don't want to, um, you know, sin. But uh, this guy is not being honest. We'll put it that way. Um, the whole issue is about raising prices. And they've managed to create a mechanism where they don't have to raise prices because they rely on somebody else and uh, there's some kind of shortage. And we're seeing this all the time. Whenever silver gets at a low price, there are bottlenecks that occur. We know that that's not a natural state of affairs. That's not what happens in real markets. In real markets, when there's a sudden surge in demand, you know what you get? You get a sudden surge in price. And we'll talk to you next time.